Hello, I'm Bernard Hickey from Interest.co.nz and welcome to our weekly currencies report, Never a Dull Moment, with Dan Bell from HiFX. Welcome back, Dan. Thank you. And the currency, plenty of non-dull moments the last week or two, it has spurted back up over 81 cents mm. as we speak this afternoon. Talk us through why that's happened and why we're at some pretty key levels. Yes, indeed. So we've had a, a very strong rally in the New Zealand dollar over the last uh, week or so. Um, the, the big move was really um, um, supported by comments from the ECB president, Mario Draghi, last week that, he would, uh, that they would pull out all stops and do what was needed to save the euro. So investors have seen these comments to suggest that maybe the ECB are going to start intervening more actively in the sovereign bond market in Europe. And the ECB actually have an interest rate and monetary policy announcement this week on Thursday night, Friday morning New Zealand time. So. Uh, with that comment, everyone's jumped aboard the, the risk train, if you like, the New Zealand dollar being a risk-positive currency. We're up against the, uh, the US dollar significantly. Um, stocks and commodities have also uh, bounced quite strongly, um, and, uh, and everyone's looking forward to more stimulus from the, uh, from, the, from the European Central Bank. Now, Super Mario has loaded an awful lot into that phrase, whatever it takes, mm -hmm. and markets have bet an awful lot that whatever it takes means certain things. All sorts of bond buying by the ECB, potentially by the European Financial Stability Fund. Is there room for them to be disappointed? I think there's a, there's a, huge, there's a huge amount of room for, for them to be disappointed. Um, the ECB uh, ended their, their, their bond purchasing program because the Germans were against the idea. And for the Germans to come back around to the idea, it's, 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 it's going to take a little bit of uh, negotiating. Uh, and overall, you know, uh, the, the fact that we're looking forward to the ECB adding more stimulus to what is actually becoming more of a solvency issue now, um, you know, isn't really going to change. Is it really going to change the current outlook in, in, in the eurozone and, and what's going on there? I'm not convinced. But what it has done, that big zip up in the New Zealand dollar from from you know 78 at towards the end of July to to now 81 or so. Uh, just put that into context uh, for the currency over the last year or so. It certainly has, um, you know, we've seen a big retracement back from those highs of uh, 88 cents or so back here. And tell us what that what that means in technical terms. Yeah, so 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 last year we had the the all time high in the New Zealand dollar, which was up at uh, eighty eight forty, I think was the the all time high there, or post float high. Uh, and recently we've been as low as uh, seventy three eighty. Now where we are at the moment is actually a fifty percent retracement from those lows around seventy three eighty uh, towards the end of last year. So we're sitting fifty percent in the middle of that post float high, which is around eighty eight forty. Uh, and the 12-month low, which is around 73.80. Now, if you look at where we are at the moment, uh, it, 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 it's, it's also in line with where we've seen quite a lot of support for the currency uh, on previous occasions. Uh, and, in fact, if you go back to that high back in uh, August or so last year, there's actually a trend line, a downtrend that's formed from there all the way down. Um, and if you actually follow the top, the top, um, the top line there, um, it's sort of respecting this downtrend that we've been in for a while. So right here, right now, the New Zealand dollar is sitting at a, a fairly critical level. Um, and I think with the, uh, the, the ECB and the Fed this week, um, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. So Super Mario, we're all watching him, but also Helicopter Ben. Mm -hmm. On Thursday, the US Federal Reserve could, could uh, <laughs> announce a third round of quantitative easing. It could. <clears throat> Uh, announced that interest rates stay lower till 2093, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. Currently it's 2014, and could cut the reserve uh, interest rate for the reserves that banks put back with the mm -hmm. uh, U.S. Federal Reserve. Uh, tell, tell me uh, how how much focus there will be on this Thursday announcement. I don't think investors are getting as excited about the Fed's announcement as they are about the ECB. I think um, at this stage no one's expecting the Fed to announce another round of QE on, on Thursday morning New Zealand time. I think they're going to keep to the, the recent script, which is, as you say, rates basically zero bound until 2014 um, if, uh, if things keep going as they are. And um, the current expectation is that we're not going to see um, another 
uh, round of QE, at least until after the November presidential elections in the US this year. So although I do think you've got a bet on the board there, <laughs> suggesting that uh, we're going to see that before the election. So We'll see what happens there. And uh, looking back closer to home with the Australian uh, uh, Reserve Bank and our own Reserve Bank last week deciding to keep interest rates on hold, how's the New Zealand dollar shaping up versus the Australian dollar? How are we going in this part of the world? Yeah, it's a tricky one, the Kiwi Aussie rate. It, I mean, it's, it broadly trades in line with the um, the interest rate differential in, 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 our, in our currencies. Um, Australia's still paying a higher interest rate um, compared to New Zealand at 2.5, Australia's at 3.5. Um, the recent recent run of economic news from Australia hasn't been quite as bad um, as, uh, as expected. So we've seen the Australian dollar a bit stronger against the New Zealand dollar. We've traded off those recent highs up around 79 to a low of around 70, uh, 76 and a half. But uh, we have actually managed to creep back up again over the last couple of days. So um, it's a bit of a slow moving cross, the Kiwi Aussie rate. Um, not doesn't move, certainly doesn't move as quickly as the New Zealand dollar versus the US. In fact, the Kiwi US rate is up almost 10% from the lows that we had in, uh, in May, June. So whereas the Kiwi Aussie is trading in a 2% range over, uh, over the same sort of period. And the New Zealand dollar didn't get a lot of help from the Reserve Bank last Thursday when, although it mentioned the New Zealand dollar as a factor restraining the, the New Zealand economy, it didn't come out and say as strongly as it had a few months ago when it warned about the strong New Zealand dollar. It didn't say, hey, this Kiwi dollar keeps going higher, we're going to have to cut rates. Very, much more cautious. Yeah, there wasn't, um, there, there wasn't any, uh, any explicit warnings about the currency at all. There was a, yeah, he did mention the high currency, uh, but at the same time he... He was, um, you know, he mentioned an improving uh, household property sector in New Zealand. Um, obviously, referencing the offshore situation as being a, of a concern, but a, a fairly sort of benign statement from the Reserve Bank in New Zealand, and, and quite a muted response from from most market participants. Looking ahead, uh, we've obviously got these key announcements on Thursday morning our time and Thursday night our time from the Fed and the ECB, and then Friday we've got the key jobs report in the United States. So how might exporters and importers, traders in the currency, position themselves over the next week or so? Well, again, I think um, the two key announcements, as you mentioned, are the ECB and the Fed this week. I think overall the currency is looking a bit stretched against the US dollar, uh, although it could easily go high. It does feel like um, the market has a little bit more upside momentum from here. Um, but I think we are poised to be disappointed with the ECB on Thursday. Um, and we know that these, uh, these issues in Europe aren't going to go away anytime soon, so we're going to continue to get these, these negative headlines. From the Fed, I think, again, we're probably going to be disappointed. I don't think we're going to be getting this QE3 uh, anytime soon. And again, um, from the US employment figures on Friday, well, if they actually come in a little bit better than expected, that reduces the chances of another round of quantitative easing from the states and will be positive for the US dollar, negative for the New Zealand dollar. So uh, I, I don't think um, some of the news... Now, some of the news out of the US hasn't been quite as bad as, as expected. There's, it's patchy, it's certainly patchy, but I don't think it's bad enough to warrant another round of, of, of QE from the Fed. So overall, if the data gets better out of the US, less odds of that, which is actually negative for the New Zealand dollar, and I think we're sitting at the top end of the range for now. Funny old world at the moment. So if we are disappointed, New Zealand dollar up at uh, 81 cents, how much could it fall if, let's say, we don't get money printing out of the ECB or the Fed? Well, I think we're inside. We're in this range between 75 and um, sort of 84. If, if you look at it uh, like that, um, I mean that's a big range, and and you know for for importers and exporters, that's having a huge impact on their on their gross margins. But you know for now, I think we're starting to get towards the top of the range. So a lot of importers are taking advantage of these levels, starting to book forward contracts out for for further dates. Uh, exporters are still taking cover, but they're but then but they're not booking as much. So they're reducing their underlying ratios about in terms of how much they're booking at the moment. So I would still be looking to play the range. I don't think the risk. Uh, the risk off uh, issues are going to go away anytime soon, but at the same time, relatively speaking, the New Zealand dollar is still attractive to offshore investors. And you only have to look at food prices with um, um, corn and wheat prices up um, mm -hmm. over 50% since June with this uh, drought and uh, drought conditions in the US. 
um, and wet weather in Europe. So I, I imagine those higher corn and wheat prices will start to flow through to dairy prices and in and, and broad terms most New Zealand's uh, soft commodity prices. And just finally looking at the one currency this week where we saw fresh record highs, mm. 66 euro cents last night. Um, there's a long term trend here. The New Zealand dollar is a rock star versus the euro yeah. since 2008 up from 39 cents yeah. to 66. Uh, who would be an exporter, but we'd all be importers. Mm. 66 uh, euro cents. Um, is is that a bit a bit infl- a bit a bit high there? Well, I think it, I think it keeps going up. Personally, I mean, I don't see any reason why the euro should be stronger against the New Zealand dollar or the Australian dollar. You know, we talk about these paradigm shifts in the global economy and what's happening in terms of the emerging economies moving towards middle middle class diets, etc. And New Zealand continues to be positioned to to take advantage of that as a, as a commodity exporter. And the situation in Europe isn't going to go away anytime soon either. So, um, you know, Kiwi Euro, we may well see corrections where the New Zealand dollar comes off, but long term, I think it continues to, 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 to remain elevated and broadly speaking will continue to trend up. Go New Zealand, as we say, <laughs> watching the Olympics too. I'm Bernard Hickey for interest.co.nz. Dan Bell from High Effects, thank you very much for coming in. That was another of our Never a Dull Moment weekly reports on currencies.